This is Sons of Susan Sun Nanamaker at Sons of Future.net. Well, I'm here with the Kelso team, and here's the team captain, Michael Vogel. And Mike, can you tell us a little bit about uh, UC Berkeley Solar Vehicle Team? Yeah, sure. So we're the solar vehicle team from UC Berkeley, all the way from California Bay Area. Uh, so we've been in this game for about 20 years now. The team started in 1991 by Spencer Kwong. Um, this is our seventh car named Impulse. It's This is also Impulse's second race. Last fall we competed in the World Solar Challenge. And we drove all the way across Australia. Some of the highlights of this car are a 1.2 kilowatt array, a 9 horsepower motor, and uh, 44 amp power, 5.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. Six square, is it six square meter uh, silicon? Yep. Solar cells? Yep, so these are uh, six square meters of sun power C50 solar cells. Ah, oh, sun power. So do they donate it to you guys or did you have to purchase? These were purchased by us. Oh, okay, all right. And was it, were you able to get any parts that's donated or is it completely purchased by your team? Actually, most of these parts were donated. Uh, the solar cells are the exception to the rule. A lot of the companies that you see on the side of our car, Volkswagen is the big one, Panasonic, Chrysler and Associates, uh, they donate us materials, funding, uh, various other things. So Panasonic gave us our batteries, for example. Great, great. Uh, what about anything that you did not anticipate? For example, was there any mechanical components that uh, took more time or you had some problem with? Or uh, is it pretty much uh, everything smooth sailing? Do you want me to wait for that? That's Michigan driving by in the background. Okay. With a team to beat right now. <laughs> so, in Australia, in, in these races, our team's Achilles heel right now seems to be connectors. Mm -hmm. So the connections that join our wires together, we have difficulty with because we don't, haven't really done this before. So we didn't know what were the things that are weatherproof, that are vibration proof, and all of that kind of thing. So we used various kinds of connectors and they fall out. So we've redone stuff, get new connectors, and they seem to be more reliable. How many people are on your team in total? We have uh, 13 people here with us today. There are about 50 on the team right now. Oh my, quite a few. And this is a span of uh, what percentage of them are new or so what percentage are new members? It's hard to say. Um, the team that we have right now are inexperienced in that they haven't gone to a race. I'm the only person on the crew that we have here that's been to a race before. So I was the only one in Australia. These guys have been around for uh, a year or two years. Very, very good. So, and yeah, you still have it uh, going. This is um, actually the car you have used for how many years? Is, is it scratch that you basically have uh, built or um, is it uh, something that you have used for uh, over multiple years? So this car is actually brand new in that it, the first race was in 2011 and that was its first debut. So we started building it after the Formula Sun Grand Prix in 2009 and then this car was completed after a year of design and a year of building in late to, in summer of 2011. What do you think of the uh, Formula Sun Grand Prix? I think it's a great event. We had a lot of fun driving around the track, although I think we're going to have even more fun on the American Solar Challenge. Oh, great. Good. Okay, fantastic. We're going to be covering uh, American Solar Challenge from um, July 14 through 21, and especially at the finish point. But this is a little bit different from World Solar Challenge, isn't it? This is uh, multiple stages instead of the, um, the way that World Solar Challenge is set up. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between how the two are in terms of racing it? Sure, so the World Solar Challenge starts in uh, Darwin, in the northern part of Australia. And at the beginning of the race, they line you all up and say, go. Mm -hmm. And so there's really only one way to get to the finish line that's taking the Stewart Highway. So they just say go, and then you have to hit certain checkpoints along the way. But there's no real timeline like there is here. The checkpoints will close, and then you'll get penalties for not hitting those. But in the American Solar Challenge, it's set, set up differently. It's set up in stages. So this race, there are five stages. And so at the end of each stage, we have to be at that finish line, regardless of whether we're there 
we can go beyond or we would, didn't make it all the way. We have to trailer if we didn't make it all the way. If we were able to go beyond, we just have to stop there and charge. Very good. Can we take a look at some of the rest of your members? Which sure. ones are new and which were old? And uh, which one is actually working on the mechanical components? And uh, okay. well, I'll let you, uh, Mike, introduce your team members. Okay. So walking around here, we have Derek on the left. Following them, there's Ben, Paul, and Devin. Uh, some of the other guys are running around in other places. Uh, so Derek is a mechanical engineer as well as Ben, and these two guys are electrical engineers. Uh, ben is our motor guy, actually. He's um, Right now, he's working on starting up our custom motor project. So if you've seen Minnesota's car recently, they have their own custom-built motor on that, and that's been a project that's running for eight years. Uh, so we're actually uh, looking for their advice, and they're helping us out to get our ours off the ground. Very good. Well, it looks like, um, well, can you tell us a little bit about your personal learning experience? Something that stood out in terms of uh, working on this car. Let's start with mm. name first. Uh, I'm Derek, and um, I think the most interesting thing that happened was when I first drove it on the track a few days ago. It was very interesting seeing this actually like, running on a legitimate track for the first time. I, I joined in the fall. And um, when the car came back from Australia, um, it was very different from just trying to see pictures of the car. <laughs> it probably helps you to, in terms of uh, modification in the future too, doesn't it? Okay, and? Uh, hey, I'm Ben. Um, definitely something I've learned since I joined Kelsel was that if you want something to work, you need to design and implement a permanent solution. Um, a lot of things that we have put together that were just for the moment, um, you know, really after time, they, you know, they fail or they uh, act in some way that we didn't anticipate. And if you want to design something good, you really have to think forward, no matter, no matter what the situation is. Well, that's what we're here. We're here for a solar energy, a more permanent solution. <laughs> okay. And, and next we have... Hi, I'm Paul. Uh, yeah, I'd second what he said about realizing that this is an extremely delicate uh, system and any little change you make, you think, oh, let's put some pounds up there, that'll help us, you know, with our balance. It's going to have a huge impact and you have to consider everything because otherwise you're just going to end up, you know, confused about what's going on. And we have here... Uh, hi, I'm Devin. Um, I'd say the thing that I've learned most is that the most important thing really is making a reliable car. Not necessarily the most efficient, but reliability is what you really need in the end. Yes, we have to start walking before we run. But uh, that's a very uh, important factor. That um, Next, we have... Hi, I'm Brian. Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned from this project is just the practicality of it. Um, in classes, we get so much theory, so many equations. And we get to come out here and build something that is truly a car. It's truly a creation of ourselves. Um, it's, it's something good to be able to practice what we've learned. Very good. So, are all well? Most of you are in engineering, or uh, okay. Oh, we have one more. Uh, hello. Wait, am I supposed to introduce myself? Oh, yeah, your name and also what you've learned the most. Okay. Um, my name is uh, Alex Cuevas. Um, I'm a civil engineer, uh, third year, going to my last year at Berkeley. Um, I've learned a lot uh, being on this team. I've been on it for a couple of years. I guess what I've learned the most is uh, how important it is to communicate between people, and I guess make sure that. You know, you have a lot of uh, cohesion within a team um, if you want to get things done. Yes, very good. Especially for engineering students, that's what we hear. That's something that you definitely uh, will be uh, it will really enhance your future, too, and in terms of working on a team and working with others. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate this. But in total, you have how many people on your team? So we have 13 here with us today. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Good luck on your race. Bye-bye. Okay. And signing up, Susan Sun on the Maker with sunisafuture.net. We are here and just with the Kelso.